The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Fever Pitch. You know how long it's been since I was last year? I don't think I've ever heard the um, female voice. I've only heard like the creepy viewer discretion advice. And um, so it's good to be back. Again, I am flying solo. Jonah is way busy this evening, but he's filming something on Sunday. And guys, as promised, we are going to get Coach Ernie here mm -hmm. in the studio with us live talking about what he does. So uh, without further ado, drum roll. May we welcome Coach Ernie, Ernie Nieres of the uh, Philippine national team. Say everyone. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> Coach Ernie, what is it that you do? Um, I'm actually a CEO. I'm an engineer by profession. Um, I have an engineering company. Um, I, have a, I, think, I think I have about a thousand employees uh, right. all over the Philippines and, and some in the U.S. Um, and being a coach is more of a passion than anything else. Right. Uh, so I own a few businesses. That's about it. You know, hopefully my kids will, you know, take over the business pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about it. He just owns a few companies here and there. It's actually um, international. He has about a thousand employees. Mm -hmm. He manages how many, how many football players, both men and women? Uh, men, we have about thirty. Uh, players in Stallions mm -hmm. FC, and then uh, about 50 in the pool for the women's national team, the Malditas. That's right. So how long have you been the coach of uh, the Malditas? The Malditas since 2011, but I, was, I, w I started managing them uh, yeah. 2005 during the SEA Games. Coach so Marlon were... Maro was the coach at uh, that time. Okay, so what made, him, what made Coach Maro decide to leave? Uh, well, he had different uh, job responsibilities that he took on during that time, and, right. and that's why uh, there were different coaches who mm -hmm. handled this position and kind of getting frustrated being the manager, and I decided that instead of complaining about my coaches, I'd take the license and be the coach. Right. And that's when I brought in uh, my tag team buddy, Tito Filbert, Alquiros. Filbert! Uh, and, uh, Shout Tasha's, out to Tito Filbert. <laughs> Tasha's dad. Yeah. The owner of Gilligan's. Yes, okay. and so, he is really funny. Actually, yep. the first time I met Tito Filbert was in Gilligan's and mm -hmm. we were talking about the women's league and I thought he was so serious and then the next time I met him, he was completely different. Yeah. And then when I saw him in Skinny Mike's, he was extremely different. <laughs> don't, don't, don't drink with Tito Filbert because he can drink <laughs> the next day. Okay, I so. know. Well, now I know. Mm -hmm. I wonder if his kids are the same. Uh, I know Tasha is. Yeah. <laughs> Tasha is like the female version of Filbert. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Dangerous. Female version of Philip. Looks like the mom. She's really pretty. Talks like the dad. Yeah. Yeah. Same with my daughter. My daughter looks like the mom, thinks like the dad. That's how I am. <laughs> I look like my mom, but I think like my dad. But I have the Pakistan of my mom because my dad's not super sociable. <laughs> hey, um, I was telling Tito Ernie earlier that um, Hans was here and he was actually offered his own show because of the ratings that he had the first time he was here. And what was the name of the show that you wanted him to have? <laughs> I, I but to my, uh, my, my... And say it with my, passion, the way you said it earlier. I don't know, but two of my kids still play for him, so he might kick them off the team. He will not. Coach yeah. Hans is professional. Yeah. He is well-mannered at times. And he will tr truly appreciate this comment if it's from the heart. I just said jerk off. <laughs> be nice because Coach... Show. Wait, go ahead. <laughs> And jerk off, what does it mean? What does it really mean? I guess it's something that he used to do when he was a kid. So. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> because Coach Hans' new show is called Hands Off. Yeah. So I guess he's now hands free when he jerks off. Sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. It's hands on. Hands on. <laughs> You're the one who started this, okay? If he, Coach Hans gets mad at me. Coach Hans fault. will not get angry. Coach mm -hmm. Hans has a good sense of humor. So so do you. So mm -hmm. we can talk about the other things. Oh, by the way, we can congratulate now Coach Ernie for he is, after being a CEO, uh, manager, and coach of the uh, Malditas, 
coach, head coach of the Stallions. Yeah. The grandfather. He is now woo, a very young grandfather. You are just 50 years old. Uh, I'm, I just turned 49, actually. He's even below 50. Mm -hmm. And he has the cutest, cutest niece. So we can show pictures. or We have a video. I, I'm still sending. I guess it's still sending. Oh, is it still sending? A picture. Yeah, yeah. A picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, there she is. Big. There she is. That's Robin. Sleeping so soundly. And yep, she yep, is? Yep. How old? Uh, two weeks old. Two weeks old. That's why he was very hesitant to say jerk off because now Coach Ernie has evolved into a very mellow man. <laughs> is that true? I don't think so. <laughs> oh my God. He still has that fire. So I was thinking, <coughs> this is Robin for now, and she can be here with us. <laughs> um, you know, we were talking earlier, and um, part of who we are, our profession, is um, being a manager. And I also mm -hmm. manage my own team. What are your struggles as a manager for the Malditas? So let's talk about women first. Well, for the Malditas, now I'm the coach. Tito Philbert's the manager. So which. Split the headache in two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now he handles that part, and I focus on the technical side. Okay. But before, uh, from 2005, yeah. when I was managing, obviously the financial part was the one of the hardest things in, in getting sponsors, the marketing, promotions, and everything. And you know, I felt that Philbert would be a better person in handling those things, right? Compared to me, because. I, I'm, you know, I kind of felt like an ATM machine. Yeah. At times. They and treat you like an ATM machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, without even a password, they just kind of reach out and grab it. You know, but now it's it's you know, uh, things are working pretty good. You know, uh, Mel Max Sports has come in as uh, mar our marketing manager, and because of him, now we have a few. You know, more sponsors than we did in the beginning. Great. And it, yeah, that's really helped a lot. Yeah. Um, so with the man managing part, the biggest headache, I guess, is dealing with the problems of the players. Because then you end up having, like, you know, it's hard enough having, being outnumbered in my family, having, you know, four girls, now five, and just me and my son. Now you have 50, yeah. you know, girls in the women's national team and completely outnumbered. Yeah. And most of the time when they come over, most of them stay either at my house or Philbert's house. You know, so it's... You're surrounded by women. Surround, outnumbered. Surrounded, outnumbered. it's not... You make it seem like you've been defeated. But, you know, we women, we're cool. We're cool people. No, we, I understand. I respect. Actually, I tell a lot of people that it, to me it's easier to coach women compared to men. Mm -hmm. uh, Why? Women follow. Men question. Yes. Okay? They like to challenge your ego. When women will listen to you, you just, well, the one thing you do not do to women is you do not yell at them during the game or embarrass them. Make them cry. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you're, you're in deep shit. If you do that, they're not going to listen to you anymore. With men, you can curse them. You can do certain things. No. Fire them up. Yeah. Women, you have to do it a different way. I know. And sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm destined to be a guy because I would rather be <clears throat> yelled at. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cry, and and mm -hmm. that's kind of like the way I've been as a captain. That's why a lot of women out there think I'm very harsh as a captain because they feel that it's not the way to motivate them, you know. And I think that it definitely takes time and experience, like yourself, to yeah. try and find what it is that makes uh, women tick. And even me being a woman, like if you yell at me, pff, when Coach Hans was my coach, it, it really didn't matter that I got yelled at. So, mm. you know, it's always good to learn that I can't make them cry. Yeah, you can't. Because <laughs> if you make them cry, then it's a different story. Yeah. You know, they, they won't listen to you. Okay? But uh, uh, just don't go past that point. Yeah. You, know, you can actually talk to them, uh, put them aside and say, you, these are the things that I want you to improve on. These are the things that I want you to work on. As long as you keep it kind of positive, then they'll listen. Yeah. And they, 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 but you have to be careful. Okay? So then they, once they kind of feel like they have you, mm -hmm. then they'll kind of take you along for a ride. So that's when you have to, you know, stop and say, oh, stops here. You know? So I don't, I don't actually, they can either call me Tito Ernie or coach. Right. And those are the two terms that they can use. You know? And, and it kind of, when they call me Tito Ernie, kind of makes it very informal. Okay. So that I don't let my, my, my uh, men's team do that. Okay. Oh. Women's, I let them, but not the men's. Right. 
What do you think would happen if they started calling you Tito? They wouldn't respect me. You know, it'll be totally different. Like you said, with, with the men's, they will kind of challenge your authority and your knowledge. Right. But once you get past that and once you have a good working relationship uh, with your male uh, players, then things are easier. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're more uh, tactically oriented. Actually, female players are more technical. They pay attention That's to detail. That's what I think. That's you know, what I think. Compared to men's. Men will be kind of wing it. Right. But with women, you have to explain every single thing. Right. So if you're not that type of coach who's willing to explain, yeah. you know, you got to look at all the options. Mm -hmm. And you, you're a girl, so you, you know that you guys always just question everything. Yeah. You know, where this question should come up. Why? Why here? Why there? Why not like this? Why this high? Why this low? You know, yeah. things like that. Of course. You have to be ready to say, shh, shh, listen, execute. Okay. Because so, then if you answer right away, then... What happens is they're just trying to delay your training, ask you more and more questions. Oh my God. So they don't have to really train that hard. So yeah. you have to know when to answer and when to say, stop, let's play. Okay. Do you think it's intentional when some women try and ask you all these questions to try and delay the training? Or do they really want to learn, but sometimes you just need to tell them, like, stop, just trust me. You, you have to. You, you can base it on the personality. Okay. You know, and, and some people are like that. They'll ask you and, and you know, they just want answers. Yeah. But then you have some who are kind of tricky, like Tasha is very good in doing this. You know, <laughs> delaying training and trying to divert your attention yeah. so that you don't have to do certain things. You know, but, but with the rest of the players, you know, and I always give them nicknames. I have a player I call Devil Child, Medusa. Those are all know, very based, based on Based on personalities. Oh, so who's Medusa? Uh, one of my foreign players, Raylene. You know, so, what's the worst one? Huh? What's the worst nickname? For, I guess for one of for, my players, I call her Devil Child. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty bad. But in a good way, because she's really tough. You know. Yeah, but and you, she likes it. Oh, she does. She even sent me a picture of her when she was a kid wearing a devil's costume. Okay, so you've found the inner her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. just kind of nurtured that devil in her to become exactly. who she is but now. I know when to be strict with the girls and when to kind of. You know, yeah. give them space. So As when we're when like when we were skinny mics, then I, I know how to back off. Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm there, I'm not there. Right, right. You know, so they don't they don't really care that I'm there. They'll do whatever they want to do. They'll make you take shots. Is what they made you do. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't drink, so it's not what hard. I saw. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I saw. Yeah. This absolute Quran ring a bell. No, I don't drink. <laughs> they gave me a couple of shots, but maybe I'll. Take a shot once in a while, but once, once in a while. everybody who knows me knows that. Which he immediately followed with a Coke or a Sprite. Sprite. Yeah. A Sprite. Yeah. You got a Sprite after that. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm not having this. So um, with your men's team, Stallions, mm -hmm. you only handle 30. Yeah. How difficult is that for you? Uh, well, it's when we won the championship, especially now, it's become very difficult uh, just because now everybody wants to beat you. And then yes. everybody's expectation is different. Yes. And then suddenly everybody is a superstar. Right. So you have to kind of make sure you harness everybody back and keep them grounded and make them realize that, hey, this is us. We're not the type of team to do certain things. Mm -hmm. No, I've always said that we're always a provincial team. Provincial? or Yeah, provincial. Provincial, Our, yeah, yeah. We're based in Iloilo. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay. and we're not the type of team that will just go in and and do certain things right. so you know and and when you when you know because of that you make some changes along the way good or bad and people always tend to question why i did this why i did that and exactly. that's that's fine i mean i'm i'm used to it you know i've been called so many different names i just tell them go get a number line up i don't really care likewise you know, as long as they don't go after my players then that's when i get pissed what do you, you go after my after? players then what do you mean if, go after? If, if you start questioning or giving your opinion about me, you don't like me, I'm okay. a jerk, I'm an asshole, it's fine. Me That's do. your opinion. Yeah. But once you start going after my players because of me, then it's a different story. Then I get... Protective? Yeah, very. Yeah. I'm, very. I'm, I'm like that also. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that there are some things you wouldn't do. What is one thing you wouldn't do as a team? As a team? Or... Well, you, you know, mentioned? football... Yeah, football is... It's still a growing business. Mm -hmm. So I will not break the bank 
you know, yeah. uh, just because other teams are financially capable of yes. doing so. You know, uh, to me, it's it's it's. I have I have other partners on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually a minority owner of Stallions. Okay. Okay. So I respect their input, especially the financial side. Right. So I and, and the way we run things in Stallions is I make recommendations as far as the type of players that I need mm -hmm. and who I want. Mm -hmm. And then, but I will never negotiate the contracts. It will always oh, be good. Philbert and Jer who will negotiate the contracts. Right. So if that doesn't work out, then I got to find another player. Mm -hmm. you know, but and that, that hasn't happened yet. So we have a good uh, working relationship yeah. between the three of us. Yeah, if, if they haven't kind of gone against you, it means they really trust you yeah. and your viewpoints and, and your position you know, as a coach. We've won two championships already, so right. we must be doing something right. Yes. But a lot of our critics have kind of, you know, gone after us for certain things that we do and how we uh, run our club and everything. Some guys would even say, I'm a failure in handling the club. I should just leave. Mm -hmm. well, that's a nice thing to say after winning two championships. And some would even say, oh, you had nothing to do with it. You had the best players. Well, part of the job of a coach is actually to pick the best players. You know, they don't understand that. They just think that, oh, you know, they you know, just pick them up somewhere and put them together. They don't know that it takes hours just putting up a game plan, yes. putting together a game plan. So it's not, it's not that easy. Game plan. You yeah. know, so, but it, it, eventually when things work, that's when they appreciate you know, what you do. Like they always say, you know, a coach never wins a game, but he always loses the game. And they blame it for losing the game, yeah. but they never give him credit for winning the game. Right. The players always win the championship, mm -hmm. which is very true. Is this from Moneyball? The, uh, uh, wow. Somebody would always yeah. say, which is, which is it's true. It's super I, true. Yeah, I agree with that. But then, you know, it, it, so to me, the team itself reflects in the personality yeah. of the coach. Definitely. You know, so yeah. last year, I had a lot of players with a lot of experience, mm -hmm. so I kind of used that. Mm -hmm. And was a little bit more flexible on certain things and, and, and with our game plan and tactics. This year, I changed it a little bit more. And uh, I kind of imposed my will and how I want certain things done. And in the beginning, that became difficult uh, with some of my players. Yeah. But now they're starting to understand and they're starting to realize like, oh, you, now I understand what you mean. You know, so it's just more of a learning curve for the new batch of players that we have. Have you ever had players who've resisted so much they just wanted to quit your team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and they, they always think some, you know, I've been criticized this year as far as uh, saying that a lot of players left well, releasing a player and leaving is two different things. Very. You know, so, but they always say that these players left Stallions. Why would you leave a champion team? You know, I mean, you know, they have their own personal reasons and I respect that. And most of it is money. We can only offer so much to a player. And if we don't see eye to eye on the financial side, then it's a good parting of ways. And we did that at the end of the year. We, we talked to our players and said, this is how much we can afford. And this is what we can offer you. Some of them said yes. Some of them said no. Right. Those who said no, you know, they still come and join us for dinner and show up for practice once in a while. You know, I have, there's nothing wrong with that. But some of the people in the press, especially these Pinocchio writers, like to make up things. <laughs> and, Pinocchio yeah. writers. Why? Crazy. Why do I call them Pinocchio? They lie. When they lie, what happens? Their nose gets made. Exactly. Made. So... But they're not bad people. Like that means him. once they start learning to tell the truth, yeah. it grows back down. Yeah. 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 So then the good people. Right. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, they like to fabricate yeah. uh, the truth and come up with their own interpretation of what is and what is not. Mm -hmm. And it, it, so far, this, especially this you know, season, it has affected uh, my players a lot. Right. But now they're starting to come together the players are starting to realize that everything that was being said and done was bullshit. There's no truth to it. So now they're starting to realize that, you know, this is us yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. The team that we have together, this is us. And we have to play together and we have to live together. Do a lot of the Stallion team members actually live together? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We have about one, two, three, four uh, condo units where uh, they actually stay together. Yeah. Once a three bedroom, once a two bedroom, another one's in an apartment building. So, do you find that when they live together, they start to 
work it's good and bad. It. Yeah. It's good and bad because if you have problems, then it becomes a big problem. Yeah. But then if they if they stay together, you know that they will kind of help each other out. Right. So it went from bad to starting to become good now. Yeah. So I think now uh, things are better with the players. They're starting to realize what value do they add. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to appreciate what management is really trying to do. Yes. You know, so that's the most important thing. It's with our team, we're trying to balance uh, the benefits of a foreign player and a local player. Yeah. I try to make that disparity not too big. You know, and yeah. because of that, yeah. sometimes it, it, you know, before it was becoming an issue. And that's why we had to you know, correct things. Mm -hmm. And I, I give credit to my partners, uh, Philbert and Jara, for doing that. You know. But then the media likes hitting on me anyway. How did they, how did they do that? Well, they, 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 they set basically a budget for the team. Uh -huh. And they talked to the individual players. And we're, to, we're trying to make it more of a performance bonus type of a pay. Okay, good. If you're in the good. first 11, this is what you get and yeah. so on and so forth. And, you know, but, uh, you know, we, we don't owe any of our players uh, any back pay. Okay. Uh, we try to do, I mean, I think we're the only team that has a restaurant as a sponsor. So whatever happens, we eat. I ate there one time yeah. with your guys. So, you know, whatever happens, we eat. Yes. You know, and they don't pay. Yeah. You know, whatever happens, we have food. Um, you know? Carlos, Neil, and Powell were here mm -hmm. um, two weeks ago. And then right after that, we went to Gilligan's and mm -hmm. Market Market. And then they were just talking. I was just listening to what they mm -hmm. had to say. I hung out with them for the first time that night. And they were saying, man, if there was a Gilligan's near, wherever they, I forgot where they, um, their condo was. Um, and they were just like, I'd, I'd eat their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, I was like, what, are you serious? <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, yeah, man. And they ordered a lot of food. There yeah. was a lot. There's like a nilaga. There was beef. There was a mozzarella could you imagine sticks, people there was with sticks. There was everything there. Yeah, at least you witnessed that. And I, I get criticisms from people saying, at least Pinocchio, right? It's like, we don't feed our players properly. That's yeah, ridiculous. Do you ever confront these? No, I mean, why, why, why give them the That's benefit good. of talking yeah. about things they don't even understand? Do you think some of your players say it to them, or they just? No, I think it's it's um, an assumption on their part. Yeah. Or they they like to think that that's how it is, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes it happens with other teams, so they think they think that it's happening also with our team. Right. You know, ours is easier. You know, we 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 have. A sponsor mm -hmm. and an owner who also owns a restaurant yeah. chain, so yeah. it's easy. You know. Seems like a good deal to me, but of course I haven't been to all the uh, all the apartments. You said you had four mm -hmm. um, for the for the guys, and um, you know it's really important for me to ask uh, Coach Ernie this because I myself am a manager. I am the manager of Sikat and I am the captain. Um, however, I do not coach. Um, I don't have a training license. And of course, I would like to get it so that I can understand the game better, like on a more technical level, of course. That's always part of the development. Um, however, when it comes to what he's saying in terms of players being a headache when it comes to finances, you know, you're housing them, but then they want more. They text you a lot and they think you're an ATM and you know, at some point, it, it's really difficult to, to go into training being extremely happy when you know that all the players, well, not all, some, very, some players, you know, are, are just trying to ask you for money. And um, Sikat, Sikat's an amazing team. Our players are amazing. Um, however, you know, with what he said, when you keep winning, you keep winning, you keep winning, you know, you have to try and regroup um, everybody's egos again and say, hey, this is who we are because in victory, I think people lose themselves. In um, success, people tend to lose themselves. And so um, part of being a coach and a manager, someone who works so, mm -hmm. so closely with their players um, or has a very good relationship with them, you want to just keep, you know, tone it down a notch. And um, you try not to get the players, uh, you don't want them to get too ahead of themselves because you love them and you want them to stay with you. You want them to develop. <coughs> But you have to let them understand that money is not the solution to everything and that sometimes passion, actually all the time, I'm just going to say it, passion overrides um, money. But the team doesn't make them starve. Like these, if, some, if someone ever said Seek is letting their players starve, our, our, slit their throat, slit their fucking yeah, throats. Our, our average pay, you know, at least in our club, for an average player yeah. is more than 20000 
Wow. Okay. Wait, it was 20? So, yeah. I could quit my office. Well, our, our payroll is, you know, I can't tell you why I told you earlier how much already, but you know, it's, it's not small. No, it's not. So it's not a joke. I was telling Philbert that when we calculated our expenses, if we didn't have stallions, we could have bought three Lamborghinis, one for each of us, past three years. You guys, what he just did uh, was employ the opportunity cost. It's a very economical thing to do. When you mm. study economics, you translate that into an opportunity cost. Yeah. And when you think about it that way, um, men typically think in terms of cars. I do too. So this is easy to no, put a no, value. No, really, no. Cost. I was just yeah. going to say one million. That's like a Hyundai Santa Fe, or like if you increase it by like a little bit more, that's going to be a fortune right there. Yeah. But the Lambo. So you, you quite do different. that for the whole year. Okay. Plus your other expenses, you know, and and with us, like the three of us, we don't pay ourselves to manage the team, to I, coach the team. So all I, of our expenses are just directed. Right. Expenses running mm -hmm. the team, maybe payroll or whatever expenses you have. So, and there's a lot of small things. Okay, that it, when it adds up, you don't notice. No, you and don't. that's when my wife slapped me with a bill one day. Yeah. This is how much you've advanced. Yeah. yeah I'm like, oh, oh my god, the word advanced. Yeah. It, it haunts me every yeah. time I read my phone and I see the word advanced. I just want to throw my phone away. <laughs> Advancing is just the, the scariest thing because you love the team so much. It's yeah. like it's getting up. It's like yeah. a baby. It's yep. a baby. Yep, and they don't, that's, I guess that's a part that sometimes we feel bad about and, you know, we feel like we're not being appreciated just, the, the players don't realize that you have a family. Yes. So that means the money I'm spending on the team, I'm taking away from my family. That's another opportunity yeah. cost. So that, that's, that, that, I think now they're starting to see that. Yeah. Because like, it's not that simple. I mean, uh, sometimes it, it, it gets to you once you start to look at things and like my son plays for the team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Philbert's on place for the team also. Oh, really? And we don't pay them a salary. You know, there are kids. Yeah. We don't pay them a salary because yeah. we take that money so that we can give it to the players. Yeah. So, but when things like this happens, <laughs> then you start oh to say, goodness. is it worth it? But, you know, we, we have a personal objective. And if, if you look at teams, you know, we've kind of met ours. We've won the championship twice already. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for us to stop. But no, you know, this is something that we want to be able to continue because of we want course. to help yeah. improve the local football scene. Yeah. No. So we're not getting anything. There's not income coming in. No. It's bad business. Yep. You know, but they don't see that yet. I do. But I don't what what I see more than the bad business side is how women's um, football, the standards are being elevated, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you experience it as well. With with women's my passion is totally different because to them uh, the women's national team, they don't get paid anything at all. Mm -hmm. They do this because they want to. Right. So it's a different standard. It's pure passion. You know, what, what I put into the women's team cannot be compared to what I put in the men's team. Yeah. You know, I'll, I, I go 100 miles, whatever I have to do yeah. for the women's team because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, both local and my foreign base players. Yeah. And they do it for the love of the country. Yeah. And people don't see that. They think that, oh, because they come from the U.S. that they're privileged. No. These kids have problems, too. Some of them cannot afford it. Yeah. You know, but then they come over and they play. Yeah. And they don't realize that. You know, a lot of these people just criticize them, thinking that, they don't, that it doesn't hurt. Yeah. You know, but it does. And then you read stuff in the newspaper, like this player's like this, that player's like that. And you know, they don't even know. Some of the players, their mom is sick. Yeah. You know, the mom has cancer. And then they, you read about these things. And then my players, they're in tears. Mm -hmm. you know, why? You know, we were playing the all-star game. And I could hear parents booing the national team. Oh, yeah. I, I, you I know, heard so that. So that was... And I know which team. I know which girls you know, were doing it because I was in and the stands. The, the sad part is disgusted. some of the parents who were booing, and I know them. Their daughters play for the national team, for the under-16 or under-19. So I was looking up, and I'm going, yeah. you, so, what are you doing? Yeah. But you know, and, and took away. Good thing it did not take away from, you know, what what everybody worked hard for, especially in Pinay football and putting the whole event together. Mm -hmm. And not not a lot of people put a lot of emphasis in that. But now, because of what what your group has done with Pinay football, it's brought this whole new uh, aspect of women's football. Right. Now things are growing. Now we've involved Pinay football with the women's committee in the PFF. Oh, good. So we had our first Finally. meeting. 
I've been pushing, I've been pushing for a while, but nobody wanted to kind of take the first step. I kept saying, come, come on board. No, yeah, join you us. know that Christine and I, when yeah. Chris, Christine and I started Seekat and yeah. Penai football together, um, but I decided that I wanted to manage Seekat mm. and she was going to do Pinai yeah, football, uh, and so she did the tournament yeah, thing, which yeah. she did extremely well. Yeah. Um, it was one of the most, if not the most challenging um, yeah. women's league out there, wasn't, you know. It was not easy. It as was a her, big accomplishment. As a, a very, uh, for her first time, I think she did an amazing mm -hmm. job, and everyone else involved um, in, in setting up the tournament, yeah. right? It was great. So and now, after that, there was a continuation of the, uh, the Pinai football all-stars yeah. versus the Malditas, which was apparently your idea. Well, it's everybody who kind of <laughs> pitched in, and you know, it's Okay. You know, I, it's not one person's idea. If it's an idea, then you patent it as an invention, then I can say it's mine. <laughs> if it's just thrown out there, it means we were just talking. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. That's okay, no problem. You know, but now, at least, Pinay football is part of the Philippine Football Federation. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get them uh, appointed pretty soon. But uh, there's a few events that uh, they'll be handling for the Malditas ready. One of that is going to be a tournament uh, sponsored by BGC. Uh, November 19, 21, 23, and 24. Great. Uh, so the LOC, the referees, and the technical staff will be the Malditas and Pinay football. Great. So we're trying to put them together so that Pinay football will always run uh, the events Perfect. of the women's okay. national team. And it's something that takes a lot of pressure from management you know, uh, of the national team. Now we have a partner yeah. who we can look to and say, please help us do these yeah. things. So. And uh, Pinay Football is a committee uh, solely in charge of basically getting um, the development of football up, mm -hmm. to, up and, there. And they've done, you know, we had Thomas Roy in a meeting uh, yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in my house, and he was very impressed with, with the things that Pinay Football has been able to do. Yeah. So he kind of said, why can't we just follow this? Mm -hmm. I said, that's a $64,000 question. You know, yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. But for whatever reason, you know, if if I say it, it becomes a problem. So it's good that they're saying it. So they, yeah. You know, so I, I guess I have a lot of people who don't really, you know, they don't know me as a CEO, mm -hmm. and that's a part sometimes that gets to me, is, in in my engineering world they don't know me as a coach. Right. Okay. So when you, when I deal with a lot of people in football, you actually have to change your hat, in you the do. way you talk and mm -hmm. the way you you approach things. Yeah. And, Sometimes to, to me it's 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 hard. Of course. You have you have certain expectations. You you run a company. You yeah. know when you make decisions, yeah. it's the right decision, yeah. and you're firm about it. Mm -hmm. But then they look at you like you don't know what you're talking about. So you know it becomes personal. Right. You know, and and you know sometimes that happens, and you have to. That's why I have you know these two guys with me all the time, Philbert. Uh, it's it's it were hot and cold. Mm -hmm. He's a good balance between <clears throat> me and Philbert because he knows how to temper the situation and yeah. he knows how to kind of calm me down yeah. when I get too excited. I get too excited too. I'm very guilty of that, but I also have two girls. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of Sika that really has to kind of like, yeah. man, puso mo, puso mo, like yeah. easy lang. You know, they have to remind me that I have a heart and I can, you know, things can happen in the long run if I don't manage my, my intensity. That's why I don't blame Coach Hans when he gets upset because, you know, there's a lot of jerks out there who can really push the wrong button yeah. and drive you crazy. Right. And, you know, especially if it's the same person over and over again. And you know, so it's not that easy. Okay, I have, um, because we only have 10 minutes left, but what's the good side of being in your shoes? I mean, despite oh, all the negativity the, the that we just up. spoke about and, and, and challenges, what do you see like in your shoes? With my, my, even though I've kind of talked about it, it's not actually negative to me. Mm -hmm. It's more of an opportunity to grow. Okay. All these things that you're going through and problems in management, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that you learn from. Definitely. And you know you can improve from. Always. And sometimes when you set standards, there's going to be a plus and minus. Yes. You know, so you just have to kind of uh -huh. stay within you know, your principles and your values and your mm -hmm. goals and go with that. Yeah. Uh, the upside is, you know, as a coach, I, I, I've got the best seat on the house. Right. Right there on the sidelines. I can't play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's one of the things I envy my daughter, you know, and, and one of the things, you know, you, you look up to my children because they, they get to uh, play for the national team. I never exactly. had that it's opportunity. Exactly. I was able to play Division One in the U.S., but that's about it. But with them, they're playing for the national team, so that's that's different. Right. 
You know, right. It doesn't matter. It's country. Right. So the, the best thing, the next best thing I can do is be part of it. Yeah. And if it's being a ball boy, a coach, whatever, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. And being a coach, you're there. Yes. And you see this whole thing unfold in front of you. Right. It's historic, especially what the women's have been doing. And you can see it. Mm -hmm. So the whole time I'm watching it and it's like, it's better than HDTV. For sure. Yeah. So it's there and then you get to input your ideas. You get to, you become part of the architecture of the whole project. Of course. And it's, it's something that you can actually build on and eventually hopefully becomes a legacy mm -hmm. of, of, of the person, of the event, of the organization, what, what, whatever. You have a very important job yeah. as coach. You know that, right? It's, it's fun. I don't look at it as a job because I love it. Mm -hmm. And that's not something, I, I, I don't get paid to do it. If this was pro bono work, I'd be happy. <laughs> but it's puro bono work. Oh my okay? God. It's not pro bono, it's puro bono work. Yes. But I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, at the end of the day, wouldn't you rather be doing that than just your CEO work? <laughs> I kind of put aside the CEO That's work how I to feel my too. partners and let them yeah, handle that. And, right. That's how I feel. Know. I mean, I am right now working a lot more in my office because um, I have a project to develop my own mm -hmm. field. But it still has to do with soccer. And even on my worst day with uh, managing CCAT, I wouldn't give that up um, at all because I love it. it. Like you said, it's out of passion. Yeah. And it's... it's I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's something that, that I know, I can see the end product, I can see the end goal. Yeah. And it's something that can change women's football history. It is, you know, so currently. I, I, I can't let go, because yeah. I want to find out how it ends. Right. You know, you're watching a movie, you kind of see the ending, and you have hardships and challenges in between, but you know you can get there, yep. so you don't want to let go. So as you progress, as you get there, things happen, good things, bad things, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then once you see the girls and once you see it all come together in the game, yeah, it's magical. It is amazing. Yeah. I bet. I mean, what I saw against um, the PF All-Stars, I wish that you had live streaming when you guys mm. left. Oh, my goodness. That it was, was a just very a play-by-play play and NJ was here making cuentos. Like that was a very young team. Yeah. That was under-17 yeah. team. You know, so, but now the, 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 the team that went to AFC... It's coming. That's going to be going to the SEA Games. Yes. That's a scary team. That is a scary That's team. That's a scary team. Yeah. Um, final, final, final question. I know I can ask a lot more, but uh, where do you see women's football um, in the next World five Cup. years? World Cup. When is that? Make it happen. 2019. Make it happen. We missed the 2015 by one goal. What? One goal against Thailand. If we, if th we won that game... We will be going to the qualifications out of the eight teams. Five goes to the World Cup. You got a 50% chance. How do you feel about that? I just want to slit my wrists right now, though. Yeah, bad. Because we dominated that game. You know, we hit the post like four times. Just dominated Thailand. Oh, we just couldn't put it gosh. in. Oh, my gosh. Yep, one goal. We missed the World Cup qualifiers by one goal. By one goal. Yeah. I mean, we slaughtered Iran. When we got to Bangladesh, first they said, Iran said, Slaughter. We will, we will kill, we will beat the Philippines by three goals. Thailand said at least five, and Bangladesh said we'll beat the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What, what did you call it? You had a term for it. They, they checked us off before we even played. They wrote us off. I don't know wrote what I said. Wrote us off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, when, when we beat them, you know, I mean, right now for the Maldives, nobody even knows that we scored the fastest goal. Yeah. In, in, in AFC yeah, women's yeah. football history. Uh huh. Uh, the fastest three goals in AFC women's oh history. Oh, my goodness. Okay. The last uh, AFF event, mm -hmm. we had the Golden Boot Award. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, was it uh, Joanna or jo Hooplin scored the most goals. Oh, my goodness. She scored eight goals. Are you serious? <laughs> That's, like, unheard of. I know. And for that tournament, the what? women's team with the young players, we scored 15 goals. 15. Most goals. More than Japan scored. More than Thailand, more than That's Myanmar. That's like beast mode. So, and these are the young girls. Yeah. You know, so now, now the older girls are kind of pissed. Right. Because a lot of people saying, oh, why did you lose? Well, against Japan, come on. I yeah, mean, yeah. You know, under 23 <laughs> I don't Japan, think you needed to scratch your head. I, I'm not even going to say anything about that. You know? Yeah. But what I can see, especially with what I'm teaching girls right now in the system that we have, and it's working, mm -hmm. I know that can be a culture of how we play. And that can be a style mm -hmm. of women's football in the Philippines. And it works. 
it works. And that's why I'm so happy about it. Right. A lot of people were mad at me in the beginning. Why would I actually train the women's team with the men's team? No, I don't I see anything wrong with that. I teach the same system. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with I teach the same system. Right. So it's the same system for my stallions yeah. and for malditas. And it works. Um, why do you think it's taken this long for for women to kind of get to where we are? You've been handling the women's team since two, managing since 2005. Unfortunately, uh, the key to success in the future of women's is the problem that we're having right now. Uh, lack of participation with the universities. Uh, oh, yeah. These coaches not allowing the players to play. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you're starting to see a gap. Coach Han said the same thing. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult and I, I'm hoping that we get more participation and support for the school teams. That's why I had to go outside the Philippines and find players. And mind you, most of the players that are part of the Malditas, even though they, they play in the U.S., most of them were actually born in the Philippines. Yeah. Joanna yeah. is a top yeah. scorer. Uh -huh. Is from uh, Corona Nadal. So she's from Mindanao. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, so she's doing pretty good. Yeah, this is, the, the only difference, I guess, from players that I've seen mm -hmm. in the U.S., we have about 200 on our uh, uh, pool of players right now for the under, six, under 14 all the way. Yeah. 200? In one year of recruiting in the U.S., 200. 70, per, uh, 70 of them uh -huh. come from Division I schools in the U.S. I have four sets of twins, and I think 10 sets four of Four sets of twins? Yeah. Where do you get those? I don't know. They just, in the majority of the Filipinas in the U.S., midfielders. Are you kidding now me? Now we have a new striker coming in. Me? She graduated from Stanford, 5'10". You're going to see her in December. Actually, when I was in, what's her name? N uh, Natalia Sanderson. Natalie Sanderson. Natalie. When I was studying in a USD, the captain of the first division, well, their first division, mm -hmm. women's team, Filipina. And I have two girls from San Diego State, uh, University of San Diego. Who? Um, Megan. Uh, Megan I'm gonna check them out. Rado. Okay. Was she the captain of USD when she was there? No, 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 no. Because... But now, uh, USD has a Filipino keeper also. She's about, uh, Michelle Kraft, she's about 5'11". They're really good. Yeah. They're the good girls team. from USD, they're... But then we have another player from Santa Clara. Santa Clara is really good. I know. So, then we have another, we, uh, Marissa Park has graduated from Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. I have a girl from Cornell, University Holy of Miami, cow. Virginia. The guys here better watch out. All Division One schools. Yeah, they're athletic and they're smart. If for all of you who don't know, Cornell, Stanford, uh, Santa Clara, <laughs> University of San Diego. Cornell's an Ivy League school. Precisely. <laughs> it's something to laugh about, but hey, they're here and we're gonna watch them. We're gonna see. This them. is something I want everybody to know. Ninety-five percent of women's national team players in the Philippines are college graduates. Ninety-five percent. That's, a, that's really good. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, players in the national team either have the college degree or undergraduates or have a higher degree. Wow. You know, so that's amazing. 95%. Um, Coach Ernie, what can you say? Parting words to first your fans mm -hmm. and then your haters. So my, <laughs> like five fans. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, the critics, they're always going to be there. Yeah. I mean, I'm... As long as you don't attack my players, then I'm fine with it. You can say whatever you want to say. Uh, you, your opinion about me, I don't really care. I mean, it's not the first time that I've heard so many bad things, but then I just have to keep proving, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what I believe in, the system that we play, and the results don't lie. Mm -hmm. So the more critics I have, uh, the more stupid people they become when we produce, right? when we... Yeah. Score, right? I, they, they said so many things about the Malditas and they're now they're starting to shut up. So yeah. we like, you know, the critics are there because that, that motivates me. You know? Does it? It motivates me a lot. And for the past uh, championships that we had, I've always used these negative publicity yeah. as a form of motivation. Not right. being part of the UFL ad, that was a big motivation for us. Mm -hmm. Telling us by this Pinocchio writer that we're going to be only fourth place, that was a motivation that I used. Huh. So now telling me again that it was a big mistake to let go of these players and this and that. So we're just going to have to prove them wrong. And they will never, if you're successful in what you do, it doesn't matter what you, you, a lot of people will hate you. Yeah. Because you took the hard road and yeah. they hate you for doing that. Yeah. They really do. Because mm -hmm. they can't do it. They can't. Well, not a lot of people So can. don't worry about it. Right. As long as they just don't go after my players and my family. Yeah. 
I'm okay. okay. Because if they do, then it's a different story. It's game time. Yeah, but for my supporters, please keep supporting the women's yes, national team yes. and the Stallions. So there you have it from uh, Coach Ernie, CEO, coach, manager, father, and grandfather. now grandfather. <laughs> father and grandfather to the cutest Robin, future Maldita player. Um, we're really happy. Well, I'm really. I'm really happy that he came to join us today. I mean, it was very last minute, but like we got to talk about a lot of things um, in terms of what it is to be a manager for the women's and the men's, how it is to operate out of passion, where you can get with passion, how you can use negative comments, channel that, and use that as uh, leverage to, to fuel, to fuel your passion even further, to try and prove those critics wrong. And, um, you know, Coach Ernie, I've also heard a lot of things about this guy, good and bad. And, you know, um, like he said, results don't lie. And as long as he keeps doing what he's doing and he believes it's right and he thinks that it's going to get um, women to the World Cup, it's going to get stallions into first place again, you know, we just have to wait and see. And um, I guess keep negative comments to ourselves next time. And, you know, uh, trust trust the management team. Trust, trust, trust those who have a passion. Um, whether it be for basketball, for soccer, for anything, because you can't go wrong when it comes to passion. So, um, Coach slash Tita Ernie, thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed this. Um, I'm surprised you didn't uh, give Coach Hans any more low blows. It would have been so fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> but just like having I said, fun. but Coach knows this. You fun. should never question the heart of a champion. Yeah. Because then you know you're a champion. You know what it took to get there. So you should never question mm -hmm. the heart of. A and champion. and being a champion, it's never the easy way. Oh. It's hard way. It's always a hard way to get to where you are, and you never take that for granted. You always admire teams that took the extra step or extra steps to getting to where they are, guys. So don't underestimate um, anyone because you know you don't really know who they are till the results come, and you're like, "Crap, I look I look like an idiot." So, guys, let's not look like an idiot. And till next week, um, I think we're showing Jonas episode, right? Are we showing Jonas episode? We'll see you guys. Be safe. Be safe out there. Take care.